Hello and welcome. My name is Baruch Sadogurski and I'm honored to work with both of the two amazing companies that we're going to speak about their products today. The first is um, Synthesized. Nikolai, CEO of Synthesized, is here with us. Um, Nikolai, what is Synthesized? So in a nutshell, Synthesizing is an API-driven data generation platform, and we solve the problem of data access and data provisioning. Um, we have two products, uh, Synthesize SDK that creates tabular data for data science, uh, machine learning, and analytics, and Synthesize TDK, which creates databases for application development teams and testing teams. Yeah, that makes sense. And I think everybody uh, can see can see the value in that. Um, yeah. And yet another dear friend of mine, Sergey Gorov, is here with us, and he is the um, with Atomic Jar. So, Sergey, what, what is Atomic Jar for the two people in the audience who don't know what it is? Hey, folks. Um, so, Atomic Jar is a company behind Test Containers, the testing framework. Uh, we usually refer to us as integration testing, but what in reality is like how it feels is it's like writing unit tests. But with real dependencies, like real databases, real everything. So in place where we previously would use a memory database such as H2 or some embedded something, something, you would just go and start real Postgres, real Oracle, real um, MSSQL, real Kafka, and real anything that can run in a Docker container straight from your ID, straight from your test. So it feels like unit tests. It has the same characteristics of uh, time, as in like you can get uh, feedback in seconds, not in minutes, hours, days, quartals, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, but with the confidence of having real dependencies, and I'm really excited to talk about uh, the integration with Synthesize because that's indeed one of the questions is, okay, I have the database, now what? How do I test with the database that is running? All right, so that's also very clear what we use it for. Um, so two CEOs and uh, Ivan Ponomaryov, uh, Ivan? Um, a little bit uh, about yourself. Uh, okay, yeah, I've been using test containers with great pleasure for years in my previous project, and, uh, and my current project uh, is my work now at Synthesize, the software engineer. With great pleasure, I've implemented this uh, feature, this functionality of integrating test containers and TDK. Whoa! Integration of test containers, atomic jar, and Synthesize. All right. Now I need to learn more. How how does it work? What does it do? What's going on? Yeah, so in a nutshell, many integration tests they require test data, and the integration between Synthesize and TDK allows all the users of test containers quickly create data from schema right in test containers. Um, it's uh, can be integrated in the CI/CD pipelines and available uh, basically immediately. Um, and I've been working a lot on making sure the integration is uh, going to be well available to all test containers users uh, very very quickly. Okay, this is really really cool. Uh, yep. Actually, I like, really like the idea. Like when you folks approached us uh, and told us that you're working, it was like, what happened? Did you just like did you get access to our internal nodes? Because that's what we see in the field basically. Like, we talk to our users and like. Yeah, this is a value. I mean, they have a huge value in the ability to start real databases, but um, it's basically like, you know, the like next step is, uh, you know, like write, writing proper tests. And, uh, you know, like uh, we all know this famous joke about key engineering thing, bar and ordering like one beer, five beers, minus three beers, and uh, fractional uh, beer and all that. But uh, what it tells us is that sometimes engineers might not be as creative in test cases and test data. And uh, they limit themselves to the green paths, but if you want to write proper tests, you actually need confidence that your test data reflects what you have in production. And it's not just random things like, you know, like UID.randomUID or something. You would rather have something close to production without using production data. Please don't use production data. I think this whole group agrees that please do not use production data in your tests. Uh, it's not good for GPR and other things, but I think that's a great middle ground uh, where you can synthesize your test data. I really love the idea. Yeah. And okay. Sergei, okay. I want you, you, to add that yeah. it's actually it's more complicated than beers when you are testing relational databases. It's not like please bring me a beer, but you need to fill out all the related da tables with uh, just consistent data. And uh, yeah, it's it's a tricky task. Okay. So what, what we see here is a couple of 
amazing tools that we can give for developers and they work together. So first of all, we have test containers that make tests more valuable because you don't test mocks, you test the real thing. And I mean, But when we speak about testing with data and we don't want to test with production data, this is where the synthesized data from synthesized come in. So we have two very important pieces that will give us the confidence that we want from, from tests without testing in production with production data. We have the system that emulates production thanks to test containers, and we have the data that emulates production thanks to synthesized. Am I right? Yep. Yeah. That's so very We cool. no longer need production. We have everything we need, you know, like developer laptops is now production. So there is a small <laughs> chance tiny chance that we won't have any casualties in uh, production and we won't have any blast <laughs> radius when we actually roll a uh, roll to production small chance a little bit better yeah. than yeah. than before excellent i will take that this is this is amazing and and i guess it makes sense on the theoretical level do is it something that you heard the need from the customers and the users as well what do they tell you Oh yeah, 100%. So we focus a lot on three key verticals. So it's finance, it's healthcare and government. And access to data across those verticals is really, really hard. <laughs> um, and sometimes it takes weeks, sometimes it takes months to get access to a snapshot of a database. And it's a problem. It's driven by regulation, it's driven by the complexity of systems. But also those companies have lots of legacy applications which need to be developed, which needs need to be maintained. Um, and that requires a lot of different testing procedures, lots of integration tests, and all that requires test data. Um, so we see a lot of demand for the test, well, high quality test data in a, well, basically in, in an environment such as, well, basically a test container environment. And I can say the same from the test container, test container perspective. I already iterated on it a little, but uh, I want to um, just add to that, that um, it's, it's one thing is to make developers test uh, and you need to enable them. You need to give them tools that they're not afraid of using. Uh, and those aren't just like browsers that they can point to their microservices, obviously, uh, like they need uh, proper testing tools. But the other thing is to kind of tell, tell them how to test, just like, okay, like I'm ready to test, I'm willing to test, but like, tell me how, like, uh, give me all these best practices. And uh, the more we can automate with tooling, the more we can bring best practices as a tool versus best practices as a readme file or as an article in our notion or something like that is better because then not only it's reusable and it's a knowledge that you can port from one company to another, uh, similar to how test containers brings this knowledge of how to start containers for testing. But um, with synthesized, we also get this uh, good practices of uh, synthesizing test data. Um, when when we test with, uh, with like real sets of data, um, not as a, not as a practice, but rather as a tool, um, which is always better. And uh, obviously, with uh, with having synthesized, uh, uh, taking care of that, uh, I, I see a lot of value in not doing it ourselves, like avoiding DIY problem where like someone would be like, "How do we generate it?" Like you know, like we write this like ugly pieces of code where we generate a lot of test data, and then it's still not correct and not what we see in production. Absolutely. Yeah. So. Synthesized users and customers say, hey, we want to put the amazing synthesized data to our tests. And Atomic Jar users and customers say, hey, we have the means of running tests with data, but we want good, reliable synthesized data. And this is where we have a win-win with this integration. Yeah, precisely. And, and also, by the way, uh, we see a lot of companies right now moving away from traditional test data management. And TDM has currently been very, well, quickly integrated into platform, uh, into different data platforms. And it's becoming more of a sort of part of a developer activity stack. So, and we see, for instance, that um, it's becoming more, uh, increasingly more sort of distributed so that we have platform engineers, developer productivity engineers creating, well, basically provisioning test data 
and provisioning well basically some environments for uh, developers and, and and engineers to basically uh well work uh work in and test different uh different components and different integrations there as well um so I think it's a really kind of this integration plays very nicely in this in this global trend, uh, well, shifting well, the entire process to the left and making sure that we enable developers test the software very very quickly locally, uh, the you know kind of throwaway instances with a high quality test data. I just wanted to mention that uh, what we're experiencing here is a true shift left motion where. Um, the tools, uh, and uh, I'm, I'm sure you're also working with like more traditional QA teams who are uh, using synthesized and QA environments. But uh, it's a great example of shifting to the left uh, some of some of the tooling and empowering developers to be as efficient as QA teams while they're still iterating in their inner loop and while they're still working on the software that is to be shipped to staging environments to be delivered to be even confirmed by their uh, team members that this is a change we want. But they get a chance to test it even before they uh, they ship it uh, to the next stage, um, and it makes them super uh, super efficient and super um, you know super developers. I'll just as simple <laughs> as that. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's a lot about yeah the data access, um, time to data, better outcomes with uh, well basically developer productivity, right? So and I think we both um, test containers, uh, well atomic jar and synthesize. We are basically. Uh, for a reason, with uh, with our products, us with TDK and uh, Sergey with uh, with with his team, focusing on complete, well exactly the right segments and exactly the right uh, user profiles, such as uh, platform engineers and uh, developer productivity uh, teams as well. And there is, uh, it was very natural for us to think about. Okay, so we seem to be focusing on the right uh, on, on on the same target uh, well, on the same kind of user personas and focusing on the same uh, value propositions. So we should definitely be working together and making sure it's a uh, yeah, very successful integration available to uh, yeah, to basically users on both sides of the, um, yeah, of, of both companies. Excellent. I, I It's it's a win-win. There is nothing more to it. It's just a win-win. You take the tool to run the tests, you take the data to run the tests, and you uh, improved your uh, confidence in going to production. And I think this is what what, what really matters. Um, anything else interesting you have in pipe? Anything? What's, what's next that you are excited about? What can you share with us? Something to look forward to. Um, from from our, from our side, uh, there is a, a lot we are currently working on in terms of um, basically the integration with uh, kind of test containers. It's really enabling more people to try it. So all of this is available for free. So we basically will provide free packages so the TDK so that all developers can uh, go to the website, download the package, download the integration, and start using it right right away. Um, so for us, it's really a lot about helping. Um, companies and users adopt this faster um, because we really believe that it's just better way of you know test, testing software and developing software. Um, uh, apart from that, we are releasing the next version of the synthesized TDK product, uh, version 2.0. So this is going to be done by the end of the year. Um, that's going to include a variety of um, performance capabilities, um, variety of different scalability. Um, components and better quality data, uh, making sure that we support more data sources as well. So we are scaling it both, I would say vertically, but also horizontally. So supporting a well, variety of interesting data sources and making sure that we provide the right kind of uh, quality and the right scalability for those data sources. And I would like to double down on making it easier to adopt. Uh, and that's also our focus for test containers. Like we want to make sure that any developer out there can use test containers. And while test containers is open source library, and uh, that's actually the key for this collaboration that we can be integrating an open source level, you know, like the interface that developers are consuming, uh, not like product level and all that. Um, and uh, our focus right now is on delivering Test Containers Cloud, which is a managed solution for Test Containers users, those who want to run Test Containers basically effortlessly, uh, like without worrying about like okay whether their machines have enough resources to run Docker, whether they can actually run Docker, or maybe their policies not uh, allow that. And obviously, the sweet spot is on CI because what we're discussing here, we keep saying developers, 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 but 
developer and workflow where developers iterate locally is one thing, but we cannot just rely on them saying, yeah, test it locally, don't worry, you can push it to production. Ideally, we still want to run automated testing on CI just to see this green check mark next to every commit. And um, obviously, um, test containers is a product uh, or a project for both uh, local development and CI, but uh, Test Containers Cloud follows the same pattern and enables it in both environments uh, and even in the most restricted environments or in the most modern environments such as uh, Tekton or uh, GitLab CI with containerized runners, you can still run test containers. Uh, and yes, it requires Docker, but it doesn't mean that Docker must be present on your environments. And that's the key of the product. Excellent, excellent. Well, we're looking forward to use this integration. As, as I mentioned, it's a match made in heaven. It's a win-win. We're looking forward for new stuff, both uh, from Synthesized and from Atomic Jar. And uh, thank you, folks, for, for being here to doing this interview. Hopefully, people will now understand this integration better and will put it to good use. Thank you, and bye-bye. Thank you, Baruch. Thank you, Baruch, for having us. Bye.